Hi, it's Kristen May, and for today's Fun in the Field Friday, we are going to explore one of the wetlands of the Francis Marion National Forest. Now, when I say wetland, I mean an ecosystem where the land is saturated with water or a wet land. Your mind probably immediately jumps to either a swamp or a salt marsh. But today we are actually going to learn about and explore a rarer and more mysterious wetland, a Carolina Bay. Because of their unique characteristics, Carolina Bays are home to some pretty special plants and animals. South Carolina used to have 2,600 natural bays, but sadly because of deforestation and draining, there are only around 200 bays left. The Francis Marion is home to around 25 of these Carolina Bays, all of which are federally protected. As we look out into this Carolina Bay, you might be wondering what's so special about it. To see its most unique characteristic, we are going to need to look out a Carolina Bay from above. Do you see how these bays are shaped like an oval? We call this an elliptical shape. All bays have this unique elliptical shape, usually in the same northwest to southeast orientation. It is estimated that these Carolina bays were formed between 30,000 and 100,000 years ago. Now, how did these mysterious and unique ovals form? This has actually been debated by scientists for many years. Some past theories include sinkholes that were in the ground and then filled with water, or an asteroid plummeting to the earth, making impact and making a huge indent. But there's been no evidence of asteroid debris found in the Carolina Bays, so most people don't think that one is true. Or what if ancient whales from the ocean got stranded here and their huge bodies left these oval indents that filled with water to form these Carolina Bays. This whale theory has largely been discredited, but because of it, a lot of Carolina Bays in North America are still referred to as whale wallows. The most widely accepted theory is a little less exciting. Most scientists believe that wind and water patterns eroded the land to form that elliptical shape and that indent from erosion fills with water. In addition to this oval shape, Carolina Bays have some other unique characteristics. They have raised sand rims, usually on the southeastern side of their oval. They have a very shallow soil fill. Underneath that soil fill, there's usually sand or hard clay. Also, this soil is usually low in nutrients and pretty acidic. The pH of the water in the soil is usually around 3.6 to 5.5. This soil is also distinctively different inside the oval of the Carolina Bays compared to the soil outside of the oval. Can you see the boundary of where the circle of the Carolina Bay ends? Swamp and salt marsh wetlands have water because they are closely connected to bigger bodies of water, things like rivers and the ocean. The Carolina Bay is considered to be an isolated wetland. When I say an isolated wetland, I mean that the water in a Carolina Bay does not come from another body of water. The water in a Carolina Bay comes from rainfall mostly. So, since the Carolina Bay gets most of its water from rainfall, do you think a Carolina Bay has the same water level every single day, all year round? Absolutely not. The amount of water in a Carolina Bay is going to depend on how much rainfall this area has received. I have been to this Carolina Bay and where I'm standing right now has been completely dry before. Also, another good way to see how much the water level in a Carolina Bay fluctuates is to look at the trunks of the trees. Do you see on these tree stumps how there are different water lines based off of where the water level was? See the different pollen lines? That's where the water level has been over time. Although the water level in Carolina Bays can change drastically, they provide critical habitat to a lot of different animals. 
Some of the animals that use the Carolina Bays as homes include things like reptiles, snakes, turtles, and lizards, amphibians like frogs, which you might be hearing some of, salamanders, a lot of different types of songbirds and even migratory birds utilize the water and the food supply in the Carolina Bays, even larger mammals, things like possums and raccoons and deer and even coastal black bears depend on the resources that Carolina Bays can provide. In addition to animals, Carolina Bays also provide habitat to some very special plant species as well. A lot of times people think that Carolina Bays get their name because of the water that is in them, but actually they get their names because of the abundance of bay trees that live in the Carolina Bays. Bays like the Loblolly Bay, the Sweet Bay, and the Red Bay all are very prominent in a Carolina Bay ecosystem. Some species of bay trees have a really cool distinguishing characteristic. Their leaves are really aromatic when crushed, which means when you crush up a bay leaf, it smells really, really nice. Another shrub species that calls Carolina Bay's home is the endangered pondberry. Some common trees found in Carolina Bay's are pond pine, pond cypress, scrub oaks, scrub pine, magnolia, sweet gums, and maple trees. And my favorite types of plants that grow in and around the Carolina Bays, wildflowers. Wildflowers like the blue flag iris and even wild orchids. It's a little too early in the year to find blooming wild orchids right now, but when they're in season, you can find two dozen different species of wild orchids blooming in the Carolina Bays of South Carolina. Carolina Bays have been drained and destroyed one reason is because it's home to peat moss and peat soil. Peat moss and peat soil can form when the land has been saturated with anaerobic acidic water. This means that the water has low oxygen and a low pH. This is what peat moss looks like. And peat moss can be valuable because it can be added to soil, forming peat soil that makes the soil hold on to water better and retain a lot of water. This makes it very valuable for agricultural and farming uses. And unfortunately, that is why a lot of the Carolina Bays have been destroyed because of peat moss mining. Now, why do all these special plants grow in the Carolina Bays? Well, these plants are specially adapted to live in the acidic soil and the ever-changing water levels. Some plants have even further adapted because the soil in the Carolina Bays is also low in nutrients. So they have found another way to get those nutrients into their diet by eating meat. I, of course, am talking about carnivorous plants. You can find a lot of different carnivorous plants in and on the boundaries of Carolina Bays. Things like these pitcher plants, which release a scent that attracts bugs, and then the bugs go down into their pitcher leaves and then hairs inside that plant keep the bugs from being able to escape back out and those bugs get stuck inside this plant where it's then slowly digested. There are also sundews that have sticky hairs on them that can trap the bugs and then digest them. You can also find Venus fly traps in the Francis Marion National Forest, one of the most famous carnivorous plant species. They actually snap shut trapping bugs that get caught in their grass. In the water, you can find bladder warts, which have tiny bladders on the ends of their roots that can actually suck in little invertebrates in the water. If you want to learn more about carnivorous plant species, tune in next Wednesday for our Wild Wednesday, where we're going to investigate carnivorous plant species even further. We're going to learn more about them, and we're even going to dissect one of these pitcher plants. Some plants and animals that rely on the Carolina Bay habitat are rare and some are even endangered. Some studies done on Carolina Bays have shown that there are 65 special status species of plants alone. Wow, what a mysterious, special, and important ecosystem. As I said earlier, sadly less than 10% of our Carolina Bays here in South Carolina are still around. 
That's why places like the Francis Marion National Forest are so important because continued development, deforestation, pollution, and other human interaction threatens the remaining Carolina bays. But the Francis Marion both manages and protects its land to ensure that numerous habitats, including the Carolina bays, remain for the numerous plants and animals that rely on these ecosystems to survive. Thanks for joining me and Friends of Coastal South Carolina for another Fun in the Field Friday. I hope you learned a lot and had a little bit of fun. I hope to see you next time. Stay wild.